Hi there and welcome to Lorena's Labyrinth. My name's Anna Pirelli. The comments that you see here are my views, beliefs, opinions, and sometimes they are not even my fully formed views, beliefs, and opinions. However, they are my understandings. Please do retain an open mind and reflect on any of the content and your comfort levels. If your views differ, please feel free to leave a comment. Also remember, it is possible to disagree in respectful ways. My way is not necessarily your way and vice versa. You might also find that some of the content on this playlist um, in regard to spiritual or universal laws, it resonates with you, meaning it feels right to you, while other laws may not feel right or they may not feel comfortable. If this is the case, the information is either not right for you or it is not right for you right now, and it might never be right for you at any given time. It really doesn't matter. As an earthy and practical person, I can put my hand up with all honesty and say that I have at different times had the same feelings about some of the content in here. And with some of them, I still have a level of scepticism uh, within my viewpoints, but I choose to retain an open mind about the things that I don't fully understand for a few reasons. Firstly, because I believe it would be supreme arrogance to think that we all know all of the answers while we have a body. Um, and because what is right for one of us is not necessarily right or suitable for all of us and I choose to respect the differences. Please do leave your uh, opinions, beliefs, uh, feel free to argue the points in a respectful way um, with any of the content on the slides and even my interpretations and if you feel that you can add clarity around some of the content we would all love to see it. Thank you. For now though let's explore the laws. All creation is governed by law. The principles that operate in the outer universe, discoverable by scientists, are called natural laws. But there are subtler laws that rule the hidden spiritual planes and the inner realm of consciousness. Contained within these laws, or conditions, is the true nature of matter. Knowledge of these laws has an effect upon the mental urges. Mind is the builder. Stay in full mindfulness of the application of universal law as related to self and to others, and know that in love all life is given, in love all things move. In giving one attains, in giving one acquires, in giving, love becomes the fulfillment of desire, guided and directed in the ways that bring the more perfect knowledge of self as related to the universal, all-powerful, all-guiding all divine influence in life. Love is life. When we go back, merge with the God Source, in some infinitesimal but profound way, we expand the mind of God. Our higher self always points the best and most perfect way and it is ours to listen and choose or reject what we hear. It does not blame, but patiently tries again to show the perfect way, the loving way. All of creation pushes forth. We are ever becoming. Identity ever remains. Universal Law Number 62, The Law of Non-Intervention. This law concerns the individual rights of people and society situations to serve self rather than live in the vibration of service to others. This law prevents physical beings and non-physical beings from intervening or correcting what they see as wrong or harmful. If this law is violated, there is great karmi incurring. Another aspect of this law is that spirit is not permitted to channel material to a recipient that would force a change in the evolution of the person. There is an exception when the channeler is willing to undergo a trance and the consciousness leaves the body for another consciousness to enter and impart knowledge that was previously unknown to the individual. So I don't know about you, but I find this law a little bit disturbing um, in a number of ways. The first part I don't really have a problem with where, and I'll quote it, this law concerns the individual rights of people and society and situations to self-serve rather than live in the vibration of service to others. Well, you know, freedom of choice, if that's what they want to do, that's fine. We all grow in our own way. Um, you'd like to think that at some point they might recognise there's more to the world than just themselves. Um, but we can accept that. That one's not really such a huge problem for me. 
It's the next bit that I find disturbing. Okay, so I'll read it out to you. This law prevents physical beings and non-physical beings from intervening or correcting what they see as wrong or harmful. Now, to some extent, I do get this, okay? Because at the end of the day, being a spirit communicator involved in healing and all the rest of it, I do recognize that um, from my perspective, of course, you know, re uh, respecting the fact we have different beliefs my understanding of spiritual law is that guides and angels cannot intervene unless we've actually invited them and then rationally um, and by inviting them I mean inviting them into our aura uh, to assist us in whatever it is that we're trying to achieve in our lives now by the same token I'm aware that if I'm to direct healing energy I need to actually get consent from the person um, who is requiring the healing of course that there's more to it than this okay I'm just thinking about how to phrase the next bit so I guess I can say from a spiritual perspective I can understand the law of non-intervention and I can see its relevance um, to how we live our lives but there's a big but okay I'm a human I'm working on the I'm walking and working on the earth plane and I think this is where it becomes a little bit difficult okay because of course yes if we're talking about spiritual then we know that um, everybody is well whether we're talking about physical or non-physical we are aware and recognize that karma will come into play as consequences to choices and decisions that we make but my concerns as a human are that let's say I'm walking around and living my life and I see somebody being abusive towards and I don't mean abusive like um, that person called me a name or whatever I'm talking about um, instances of child neglect and, and very severe um, violence towards perhaps women and children or elderly abuse things like that that if we ignore these things I don't see that as loving to start with I think that's very uncaring and a failure to intervene to me uh, based on my conscience actually makes me complicit in the violations that are perpetrated upon other people and this in itself brings complexity so I'm also mindful of the fact that at the time these laws would have been written down they're obviously the product of a person I believe it goes back to I think it's Annie Besant um, off the cuff actually no I think it's Madame Blavatsky and I think we're looking at social times you know if you go back to the time that these laws were written for people human beings um, it was at a time when women and children didn't have any rights per se they were not considered to have free will and if they had it it had no relevance because women and children were the property of men men owned them so people can sort of dispute that but actually if you go through the laws which have I've had to do um, with my Bachelor of Social Work we know that um, men could do things to women because they were considered to be the property if women and children are the property of men that means they own them okay so just making that very clear and this would have been the culture at the time and from my perspective let's say if somebody chose to intervene uh, against a man that could lead to conflict you know what I mean and violence and all sorts of uh, repercussions but we live now in you know the 21st century and time has progressed and I think morally we're all aware that um, to allow somebody to be harmed knowingly um, is a violation of their free will this is very complex I'm just trying to think how to phrase it again look so another part of the complexity I think even in the 21st century is that I am aware um, through my training in um, human relations and counseling and mental health and this kind of thing that uh, often when we attempt to help a person if it's not been asked for that it's not necessarily well received and it can actually lead to people blaming us for whatever decisions they make or just being plain angry because they might see us interfering and not trusting them to be able to manage their own problems so there's a whole heap of issues associated with offering help when it hasn't been requested but at the same time I can't help but flick to this extreme of you know 
if we were thinking that, well, we can't help or we can't intervene unless there has been a request put to us, where does that leave people that don't have a voice? Or where does that leave people who are in a current situation where they actually can't speak for themselves through lack of ability, perhaps they've got some kind of physical disability. And also at the same time, it reminds me of a story I read on the internet not that long ago where a man was complaining that he had walked past and seen a woman um, being physically beaten by her partner and being a man of moral ethos and thinking that was wrong, he's jumped in and defended her only to basically cop it from her for interfering and that you know where she's turned around and said he shouldn't have uh, involved himself and so you know men then get disturbed these days as to whether or not they should jump to the assistance of a, a woman or a vulnerable person if they're if they're being hurt or harmed but the point being that or the point I come to is if I was walking past somebody who was being hurt and let's say it was a woman and the bloke the bloke had his hands around her throat and she couldn't call out and ask for help you know do you adopt this attitude of oh well I'm not going to help because she didn't ask you know uh, to me it's just um there's a level of insanity I'm sorry that's about the only way I can think to phrase this as far as saying um the law of non-intervention applying to people on the earth plane I think sometimes we must intervene just out of good conscience and love but we have to be very mindful about how we do intervene and perhaps you know because it's contextual I guess you know if you jump in when there is no need or before it's been identified that there's a need that's going to create problems uh, sometimes people who are in need they won't ask for help so perhaps in those instances it's a case of asking them would you like to have some help you know things like that I think um, you know and I think think this is a mixture of think and feel I think and feel that everything is contextual sometimes it's appropriate sometimes it's not that we all have to live by our moral judgment of what is right and wrong what feels right to us and then on the other hand, it's to be aware that there is going to be karmic consequences for whatever decision we make. Um, and that those karmic consequences might be negative, they might be positive. But at the end of the day, I don't know about you, I sort of think for me, regardless of the situation, I have to be able to live with myself at the end of the day and have a clear conscience too. And I think from my perspective, if I saw somebody being harmed that even if I wouldn't jump in the middle of it because quite frankly I don't have the physical strength but even if I wouldn't put myself in the middle of the situation I would probably call the police especially if violence was involved I, I couldn't be one of those people that sit at home listening to somebody scream because they're being be beaten and not do anything about it so I'm just going to throw this over to you guys and say look well what do you think you know um, do you feel that the way this is phrased could be phrased incorrectly um, or is it phrased correctly and it's all just contextual as well yeah I'm gonna let that go I'm gonna hand that over to you guys to think about please do leave a comment I'm more than interested in your opinions anyway I think I'm gonna leave that with you and say thanks for joining me while I do this head fry today take care see you on the next video bye bye